Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! What, 9,000? There's no way that can be right! Welcome back, boys. So, this video will probably be the longest video I've ever made to date. And I do know that it is going to go into the 10-minute tip section. With that being said, however, um, it is going to be... It's going to be quite a bit longer than 10 minutes. So, so even though it's in the 10-minute tip section, please go easy on me, guys. This is going to be that in-depth guide into both Maestro Damage and Maestro Skilling. So, we're going to go over... We're going to go over how to get, you know, up to 12.5 million damage and then getting your skills up into at least, at least base 50s. That's a good goal for you guys to aim for, but there's going to be a lot to get into. So let's get into it. All right, boys, starting off. We're going to start off with skilling, and I think we're going to go into damage in this video. And you might be thinking to yourself, uh, you said that the first part was going to be skilling. Why are you killing, you know, mobs? And the point of this is, is, as you know, once you are a maestro, you unlock an ability called Crystal Countdown, which essentially means that killing a crystal or giant lowers the required XP of a random skill by 2%. At the level I'm at right now, which is level 145, that's going to stack up to 66%. And I know I've harped on this in the past, but what I would recommend is getting onto idle on efficiency. And what this does for us is, you know, it'll show you your crystal spawn chance, right? So it says it's 1 in 57. Uh, with my snapshot, it, it's much lower. It'd probably be around 1 in 30, I want to say. But what we're looking for is if you go into skills, what you'll see right here, crystal uh, current crystal countdown reduction, the max is 66.2%. So what we're doing here is we're fighting whatever mob we are currently comfortable, you know, one-shotting. So being able to one-shot the crystal mob. Now, if you're in world four, you know, that's whatever you can still one-shot. If you're in World 1, I would recommend the spores, the green mushrooms, solid spot, solid spot, or the sticks, also another great spot. You can also get Woodular Circles. In World 2, one of the best spots, Shifty Sandbox, absolutely fantastic. World 3, I would recommend the Dedicated Rams, just because that's a chance for another one of the Neutron Ice Star rings. If you can't, the mustaches are not a bad spot. In World 4, it's just essentially you're pushing whatever mob that you can just one-shot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this continue to play up until a point where we have 66.62% reduction in all of the skills. And I'll see you once that happens. Alright boys, welcome back. So part one is completed. Uh, just for a frame of reference, this took just under two hours and the reason why it took so long was a lot of my skills 
we're already pretty close to leveling up. And once they do level up, it resets the countdown. So if you're going in a map that is slightly faster, such as I would say Sandcastles being the best map hands down to farm, uh, it would go a little bit faster for you, especially if all your levels are, you know, right off the bat. You haven't got any of these percent multipliers on yet. That way it doesn't accidentally trigger a level up and then you have to obviously go through all of that again. So just under two hours, but that was part one, the preparing to skill. Now we're going to get into the actual skilling portion of the video. All right, boys. Part two is going to be the skills respectively in their own little sections. So I am going to go through mining and then chopping, followed by fishing, and then finally catching. And they are each going to have their own independent section. And it's going to be a seamless video, which means I'm going to go through all the steps that I personally use in order to get them ready. So there won't be any cuts, and I will talk you through the process as we go through it. So without uh, talking too much, let's get into it. All right, so first up we have mining. Uh, reason why this video took so long to get out is I did end up grinding for well over 1600 keys, or I'm sorry, silver pins, so I could, you know, give you guys the best video I possibly could. So with that being said, I did get uh, 400 points for all of the four main skills that feed into, you know, getting that maestro damage up, which in case you didn't know, the four skills that attribute themselves to damage is your mining, your fishing, your chopping, and your catching. So for mining at level 400, that's going to give us plus 33% mining efficiency, that 29% prowess effect, and an almost 10% mining AFK gain. Uh, talk a little bit more about mining AFK gains here in just a little bit. Uh, but for mining, we are going to look at our orange cauldron. Obviously, that strength attributes itself to you know, mining. Uh, warrior's rule, but this is only for warrior-based classes. So if it has a tooltip saying it's only for warrior-based classes, it does not help us when it comes to mining. So that's why our efficiency will be a little bit lower than if we were on a warrior. But we will still be able to do pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Wyoming blood, I would recommend trying to get that to as high of a level as you possibly can going to switch that out so big bubble right here wyoming blood make sure you get that up mining and fishing xp gain this is going to be pretty good for you um it does get quite expensive but the mining and fishing xp gain is really nice especially on a maestro um strong tools the following tools give 23.6 percent more scaling power than normal for your pickaxes and your fishing rods and that is going to wrap it up for, I want to say, mining. Obviously, Molto Orange, this follows everything that I did in the mining video. And Dream of Iron Fish, if you're able to, you know, support it. So that gives another 4% mining and fishing AFK gains. So now that we have our alchemy and our post office all set up, we're going to go, go over to World 3 real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our prayers. This is going to be what we're using for the entirety of the video. So I won't be coming back to this section. Uh, but we are going to equip skill dimwit for that extra 102% skill efficiency at the detriment of minus 68 skill XP gain. So that's not going to change. We're going to keep that on for the duration of the video. I'm going to go up to the talent library. And this is huge, getting your skills up as high as humanly possible is what's going to flush out your build. And it's really, it really compounds. So right now I'm in my damage, which equates to skilling spec because we do need that for the crystal countdown. Now I'm going to flip over to my actual skilling spec. And what you're going to go through into here is try to get bliss and chips up as high as humanly possible. Your skill XP and then your Clever Clover Obels. Really all that you need in this section for right now. Obviously once your Maestro is more cemented and you want to be able to print more samples, Printer Go Burr is huge. And then when you are trying to get your other characters up to a point where they can reach your Maestro, these both are, you know, they have their purposes. 
As far as the Maestro Transfusion, when you are doing one of your four active skills, which is going to be your mining, your chopping, your fishing, and your catching, I don't recommend using this. But if you did not know, it is very good for stuff such as trapping, worshipping, and smithing. So those don't have a quote-unquote efficiency that is detrimented by using the skill. And essentially, you just reap the benefit of being able to use Maestro Transfusion. When it comes into your Journeyman tab, not a whole lot in this section is actually going to give you an easier time when it comes to skilling. Um, I personally put points into L Lucky Horseshoe just because I do have the points. And that does, you know, affect drop rates such as getting cards and stuff like that if you do end up doing it AFK. Um, and then obviously the biggest one is going to be Happy Dude. So that's an increase at my level. Uh, 396 is a 396% XP gain. The two that actually do matter as far as getting higher <clears throat> yields is going to be HP because HP, there's a skill in alchemy that does increase um, how much you can mine your mining efficiency based off of health. <clears throat> and the same for chopping. There's an alchemy bubble that increases your chopping efficiency based off of your max mana points. All right, now that we have gone over alchemy, the talents, and the post office, the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our skilling tree. So as you can see, I've unlocked both constellations, the Hydron and the normal constellation. We're going to come in, and this is where it really depends on whether or not you want this to be an AFK build or if you like doing it active. Now, there are pros and cons to both of them. Active will be a little bit faster depending on what kind of gear you have as far as AFK, but you won't be able to get the cards from mining, chopping, fishing, and catching. So I'm going to build this guy if he was an AFK build. So I'm going to put my points into the skills that I would put it into. I'm actually going to get rid of this 2% skill AFK gain, and I'm going to put it into Dwarfo Beardus for the plus 5% mining efficiency, 20% multi-ore chance, and OG Skiller for carry cap, skill AFK gain, skill prowess. And then over in the Hydron section, I'm going to pick Comatose Major. And then once we have all of that done, we're going to come over to this, and I'll go over cooking in the lab real quick. It won't change between any of our skilling builds, so I'll mention it here in mining, and then we won't bring it up again for chopping, fishing, and catching. So what we're looking at to be successful here is we want, let me find it, all of the skill efficiency bonuses. So right there, rice ball for a 33% skill efficiency. And I think I skipped one. I should have. There we go. Corn. So my corn is at level 22. That's going to give another 44% skill efficiency. So corn, huge. And then we want rice ball. Again, 33% skill efficiency. Scroll down just a little bit more. We're going to want the leaks for 24% skilling prowess. And the fortune cookie for faster library checkout speed. So that will wrap up cooking. Now we're going to go over and we're going to change what our from our damage slash skilling to our pure skilling build. Now, this is being built as if it was AFK, so you're gonna want to use the AFK skill gain chip. Then you're going to want to put in total skill efficiency, which is on these characters. We're gonna take that off of them, and we're gonna give ourselves plus 60% more total efficiency. And then the bottom two, obviously, if you do get your character level 75, you would just shift down these two chips and you'd be able to put in another total skilling efficiency chip. All right, now that we've gone over all of that, we're going to go into the gear. Now, this is split up into whether or not you're AFKing or you are active. If you are going to go the AFK route, I would recommend the Gift Miss Newsy Cap because that is going to give us a 10% all AFK gain. Then I would recommend the Angel Wings for another plus 11% all AFK gain. And this is where it comes up to, again, whether or not it's active or AFK. If you are going for purely AFK because you want to level up another character, character or you have your Bubo who is active at the moment, you would want to put on your Dawn stopwatches. Now, the Rex Rings, these are if you want to be active because they're going to give you plus skill efficiency. Um, 
if you are not able to get the Dawn stopwatches, obviously the Rex rings would be good AFK as well. Um, but if you are capable of making them, Dawn stopwatches are going to be better for the AFK portion. But if you need to, Rex rings are always a good source. Since we are leveling, you're going to automatically go for the Acorn Topper. And the Acorn Topper, if you did not know, you would come over to World 1. And at the very bottom of this tree, you're going to go all the way down to this portal, which may, may or may not be unlocked for you just yet. But you're going to go into this map and oh, went into the wrong one, boys. Sorry about that. You're going to go to the very bottom and you're going to go into this portal right here. And once you come into this room, it's going to unlock the acorn topper for you. And we want to use that because it's going to give us a plus 15% skill XP gain, which just equates to being able to level up faster. Since we're not able to equip a chess piece, we are going to use the dirty coal miner baggy suit pants. We're going to equip both of those and the cavern trekkers. Obviously, if you can make the upgraded boots, I would recommend those, but I would assume, you know, you probably still have the cavern trekkers because getting those salts is kind of a pain in the butt. All right, bringing everything together, we are going to go into the cards now. I would put your points into specifically how I have it set up here just because we are using the chip that doubles the top left and the bottom right. So we're going to use the Amarok. Again, this is kind of leaning towards a AFK skill. That way you can still level up another character. Next to it, we're going to go into the Iron. The Iron is going to give you that 25% total mining efficiency. If leveling up faster is more important, you can trade out the gold for platinum if you have a lower level platinum. Uh, platinum, which is what I'm going to be using, is going to give me 4% mining away gains. Then I'm going to go into Dementia for 12% mining speed. Go into Void for another 6% total mining efficiency. Going to come down to Luster for the 25% mining speed. And then into the Bunny. And last but not least, we're going to go into the Chaotic Troll for the extra 100% all skill efficiency. Now, Tools. They're all going to be dependent on what the best tool is that you can equip. So as you can see, Void is at level 40 for fishing, Void Imperium Net 45 for catching, Void Imperium Pick 45 for uh, mining, and Void Imperium Axe 45 for chopping. So this section, essentially the best tool that you can possibly equip. Now, for food, right, I would liken it back to all of the videos that I have made before where you want to use health food when it comes to mining you want to use the chopping food those are really good for sampling now for a prolonged experience such as getting your character up to the next level i do recommend it and at the same time i don't recommend it just because you will be going through a disgusting amount of food to get these levels so it's it's really dependent on the person on whether or not they want to use that same for the shrines obviously for mining you would want to use the Isakin shrine but we are already you know two and a half thousand hours into the next level so i'm not going to use this for my mining but that's obviously something that you can feel free to use so with everything that i've showed you we're now looking at about 4403 plat an hour and that's going to give us an xp of about 264. so as you can see 264 is still quite of a bit away from 4.05 million, but because we did go through and we did get that reduction, it's much better than what it was before. Now, when it comes to games, and again, I don't recommend spending any real world money on a game, but playing games specifically for chopping and mining, it does make the experience go by much faster. So I'm gonna go through a quick game see if lava will be nice to me and not lag out the game and if he doesn't you know we might be able to be able to show you exactly how much experience you can get and i picked the wrong platinum node to do this on because as you can see my cart is jumping off the screen but i will still try to do my best for y'all even without being able to see the cart and essentially, we're playing these games because, as you can see, that gave us an immediate 114,000, which is more than half, or I'm sorry, a little bit less than half of what our, our expected XP an hour is. So in the realms of both mining and chopping, I do recommend 
playing the games daily to be able to expedite this process. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up mining, and we're about to go into chopping. All right, boys, I'm just going to show you the unedited version of what I do to get ready for chopping. So now that we have completed mining, we're essentially just going to change over our uh, chopping bubble. We're going to put the chopping bubble on. Then we are going to go over to World 1. We're going to change out the chopping bubble for the mining bubble. So we're going to come on up here. We're going to change out Dwarfo Beardus. We're going to grab Hipster Logger. And then once that is done, that's everything that you have to change in between you know, what you're going for. So if it's mining, you're going to pick up the mining bubble and the mining star sign. If it is chopping, you're going to pick up the chopping one. And if it's fishing, fishing. If it's catching, catching. And then once you're done with all of that, the tree that I recommend probably the most, I'm going to come up to the Steep Sheep Lodge. And it's going to be this bad boy right here, the Saharan Full. So as you can see, we're going to switch over now our cards. And we're going to shift this over to the Hard Resources tab. As you can see, we're going to get 1.26 million XP an hour with eh, around 4,187 logs. And this is probably the best use. I'm not gonna count that first one. This is probably the best use for your, your points for games, because as you can see, if you get even a moderate amount of points on the chopping minigame, the amount of XP that you get is, is it's huge. I have gotten, you know, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 points just from doing this and it really makes the next levels come so much faster and i would recommend again not recommending to spend money in the game but if you do have gems let's say from you know that uh, event that we just had the ios launch then 100 percent recommend the candies um use the candies and the levels will just you know they'll fly by because we're looking at 147 afk gain rate and a 1.26 million. So that's just AFK in for give or take like five hours, right? Which is not an exceptionally long amount of time. But for chopping, recommend the hard resources tab. Again, top one or in the top left corner, the Amarok does not change, Chaotic Troll does not change, and the Bunny does not change. I would recommend using the Birch Tree for total chopping efficiency. Then I would come down to the palm tree for chopping away gains. Come all the way down to world four if you're capable of getting it. I would recommend the alien tree for total chopping efficiency. The Saharan full for chopping away gains. And last but not least, the cube tree for an increase to chopping speed. So that's going to wrap up the chopping portion of the video. And now we're going to go on to fishing. All right, part three is going to be that fishing. We're just going to shift over to our cards. Again, top left, bottom right, and the bunny do not change. I would recommend using the hermit can for total fishing efficiency. I would recommend the bloach for fishing away gains. I would come down to the skelefish for the total fishing efficiency. The shark for fishing speed. And then I would take the kraken over the fishing XP just because I found that the fishing away gains is more so beneficial than the fishing XP. So that's going to wrap that up for that. Go into the hard resources again, plus 6% skill AFK gain rate just beats out everything else. And then I would come over into the warrior cauldron. I would grab the sploosh bloosh. That's going to take the place of what we were just doing, which was chopping. Then we're going to teleport back to world one. We're going to switch out our star sign for the fishing star sign. So we're going to come on over. We're going to get rid of hipster logger. And now we're going to go to Pisces. And then I recommend fishing because you may not be at this point just yet, but fishing until you can get to these medium fish. And this is where, you know, it really, really comes into play how much you effort you put into it because without a shadow of a doubt, I will say that the XP that you're getting here, which is 147,000, it is so much faster than if you go even just one map over. So we're looking at about 147,000 there. And here we're looking at 17.6 thousand. So that's a 10 times increase in XP. Um, for the games, unless you're going for the Megalodon trophy, I would keep my games 
for chopping and for mining. Um, this is a really good point to use any of the balloons or the candy that you have gotten just because fishing and catching are some of the slower skills. So I would recommend using, you know, one of those other, those other two. Oh, try to say hi to the guy and he left. So that's going to conclude fishing. We're going to get into catching. All right, boys. So hopefully you can start to see the rhythm that we're doing now. We're going to shift over to our catching tab again, top left, bottom right, bunny, do not change. I would recommend using the fairy for the percent catching speed. I would then come up, I would use the fruit flies for the catching away gains. Come on down to the mesquite snows, mesquite snows for that total catching efficiency, the fly sickles for the catching away gains, and the bumblebees for the total catching efficiency. And then, you know, it doesn't change. What are we gonna do? We're gonna come over, we're gonna change our bubble. We're gonna equip that. Then we're gonna immediately teleport to world one. We're gonna come over to the star, or I'm sorry, the star signs. We're gonna change to the catching star sign, which is shoe fly. And then we're gonna teleport to my favorite spot, which is over on Mammoth Mountain. And we're gonna come on down here and it looks like we're gonna have some company, which is always good. So we're gonna come on over here and again, I would not recommend using your game points on catching just because I do find that, you know, it's, it's more beneficial to use that on the other two skills that I, I had described. So with all the cards, with our alchemy changed over the star sign and us on hard resources for catching, we're looking at about 248,000 XP an hour which it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. This will take you the longest to level up out of the other skills because you'll probably want to use your balloons and your candies on fishing, which is completely understandable. But this is what I found to be the best in terms of XP and you know just getting, getting the level done as fast as possible. That way you can progress on to something else. So with mining, catching, fishing, and chopping done, we're going to shift our focus now from our skilling into our damage, which I'm going to get into what skillage damage is and how you benefit from that. All right, boys, now that the skilling portion of the video is done, we're going to go into damage. I hope I was able to hammer that point in that it's all about repetition, right? Change over the gear, whatever respective thing you're doing. So if that is chopping, changing over the gear for chopping, then mining, then catching, then fishing. At the same time, you know, that repetition, changing your cards. What am I doing? Am I going mining? Am I going chopping, fishing, or catching? You know, just that repetition, go through them. And once that's done, you can get into, you know, the point that I'm at right now. So we're going to go over our damage skills. So we're going to flip on over to this. So big one is going to be our talents. We're going to try and max out Sharpened Axe. We're going to try and max out Gilded Sword. Going to max out Lucky Clover. Then we're going to go into Knuckle Buster for the increased critical hit damage. Feather Flight, just because more movement equals more kills equals more XP an hour. Sleeping on the job, it's the same thing as it was in Skilling, whether or not you want this to be an AFK fighter. That way that they can get you cards. Um, I am just a big fan of Active because... When you are AFK, you're not getting those crystal spawns. So doing AFK on a maestro in the damage portion is usually bad because, you know, you want those crystals. That way you can utilize your, you know, your crystal countdown. So into the journeyman tap, a couple points into Indiana attack just because it is really our only AOE. Then obviously you want to level up as much as possible to punch man. Gimme Gimme because this will also probably be your boss killer. So you want that chance at double loot. <clears throat> lucky Hint for the Lux effect on damage with a base increase. And then Lucky Horseshoe for the base luck. Cards Galore just because you, know, you can get cards actively from mobs. So you do want that. Rares Everywhere just for a percent chance that items from the rare drop table are likely to you know, drop. And then come on out Crystals. This one I'd put, you know, more points than I have into it. I just, you know, I wanted to splurge my points elsewhere at the moment. But that's for your base crystal mob spawn chance. 
And then in the uh, Maestro tab, I did put a lot of points into Coin Tosser just because I'm also using this character to do dungeons. Um, not really necessary because you will probably be autoing the entire time. So if you're not using your Maestro for that reason, would not put points into it. Uh, Printer Go Burr, again, if you don't have the excess points, I would not worry about this just yet. My focus would be Skillage Damage, Triple Jab, and Lucky Charms. Everything else, and I'm sorry, Crystal Countdown. Everything else can come in at a later point, but it's mainly Skillage Damage, Triple Jab, Lucky Charms, Crystal Countdown, and then fill in the rest of your tree. Now, the biggest bonus to our damage is going to come from Skillage Damage. So at my level, which is 146, I'm getting plus 37% damage for every five levels of my lowest level skill. So you'll see here in my skills info, the lowest right now is catching. So if I was to get another four levels in catching, I would get that extra 37% damage. So as we look at it right now, I'll flip over my cards. As we look at it right now, our damage is sitting at you know 4.16 million damage, but we can make that so much better. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to World 2. We're going to go to the Alchemy Lab. And we're going to switch this over into Kill Per Kill. Now, reason for this is, this is going to let us push for higher mobs, right? So our ability to progress through World 4. So we want to be able to kill the strongest mob we possibly can. That equates to more experience. That equates to more levels, which means we have more points to put into fighting other mobs. Now, for the post office, I do recommend maxing out the four skills that go into skillage damage just so you have that damage, right? From leveling up the skills as fast as humanly possible, which bleeds into being able to do more damage. Then I would put points into non-predatory loot box because we want the luck. Luck turns into damage for us. Drop rarity because we are a boss killer and for the increased crystal mob spawn. So the damage you're gonna see is without any points into death storage unit, which if you had maxed this out is a huge boon to your damage, huge boon. As same for Bob's boxes in the Civil War memory box, just because we're not an AFK fighter right we want to be active because we do want to get those spawns as far as the two afk items we're not going to use it because we want to be active so now with all of our damage gear on as normal we're looking at four million four hundred thirty one thousand but we can do so much better as far as obols i would recommend all of your you know your drop chance plus luck items so as you can see, we have quite a few of the Platinum plus Luck drop chances and as many of the Platinum Luck Obols as we possibly can. But the biggest source of damage that you're going to see outside of Skillage damage is going to come from your Star Signs. So we're going to unequip all of the Star Signs that we just had. All right, so everything is unequipped. We're going to look at our damage one more time. So we're at that 4.4 million damage. And this is just my recommendation. Since we are not going to be AFK, we absolutely want to pick up the overachiever because of the chip that we're using. That's giving us a plus 30% total damage gain. The feisty, simple, right? Because we have that chip, double star signs, boom. That's another 12% total damage. <clears throat> and then the bulwark, when doubled, that gives us a plus 40% total damage. But the negative, which is the minus 12% movement speed, that does not get doubled. So really you're getting 40% damage at the detriment of minus 12% movement speed. Gives us an extra 2 million damage and we haven't even equipped the star sign yet. And the reason why I use the bulwark is if you put points into Frothy Mock, which boosts foods like potions, giving a 32% higher bonus than normal. One of these potions, you know, even the smallest one outweighs the negative of using that potion. So absolutely put the points into Bulwark. That's where you're going to see a lot of the damage come. Last but not least, we're going to come on over to World 4. And there's quite a few things that boost your damage here in World 4. Big one, Turkey a la Thank. Total percent damage. Am I at level 22 giving a 44% total damage? Scrolling down. Just a little bit more, Octoplops at level 20, that's another 40% total damage. Scrolling down just a little bit more, 
we're going to look for onion at level 11 another 33 percent total damage so you can start to see how that food is coming into play uh, our wardular shrine is at level 15 that's going to give us a bonus of plus 54 percent which is gorgeous and then you're going to see the magic happen here so what you're going to want to do because this is our skilling slash damage build is <clears throat> absolutely recommend unlocking the uh, chocolate cookie right that gives you a 75 percent chance to spawn a crystal mob when one dies so that's where that skillage damage that's where that crystal countdown starts to come into play because you're constantly killing crystal monsters you're constantly leveling up your your skill reductions which equates to going to skill up going to get the damage and then being able to come back here and just absolutely pop off at that point i recommend for the next one is going to be the uh, chip here that gives weapon 1.25 times more weapon power then i'm going to come back in here i'm going to come all the way down here i'm going to equip both of my double so both of these are doubling the top bottom i'm sorry the bottom right and the top left then i'm going to come in i'm going to pick the double bonuses of all active star signs and then for last but not least i'm going to put in double the bonuses of the currently equipped pendant because we are using chiswar's caustic scarf that's going to give us 40% total damage and 10% mob respawn, which you just cannot beat. And as you can see, we're now looking at 13.571 million damage, but I'm pretty sure we can do better. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back. We're going to change our hard resources. And here you have two really good options. So right now we're looking at that 13.571 million. Our crit chance is at 97.1%. Now, if you don't really care about, you know, that 3% not hitting a crit, you can put that into total damage, right? That's going to put us up to 15.478. If we do snapshot, because we have that caustic chiswar in the bottom right, what that's going to do, it should put us, I want to say, somewhere over 17 million damage. Okay, so 16 million damage. We'll flip that back. So yeah, just over 17 million damage. Now, if you want to make sure that you're critting 100% of the time, which I have found to uh, be better, um, obviously I can go get 3% more chance to crit, and then I can just switch back and have that 17 million and 100% chance to crit. You can use the bonus from the Hyperion Nebula, which is that 30% crit chance. And then you're looking at a solid 15.6 million, 127% chance to crit for an almost two times crit multiplier. And as a maestro, your accuracy is obviously insane. You're at 495,000 accuracy, 2,000 defense, 230 230% movement speed, and you know we're not we're not too worried about drop rarity, our class XP at the moment. We're just trying to get our skills up. All right, boys, I, I think that's gonna that's gonna do it for the video. Um, obviously, we went over a lot. There is a lot that goes into you know making a good maestro and it is not a fast process it's a lot of dedication to unlocking all the star signs a lot of dedication to hunting down all the crystal mobs that you need in order to level up and then actually going to level up all of those skills to get your damage from the skillage damage up and then obviously there's there's work to be done in the chip uh, department there's work to be done in the cooking department and in getting the cards that i had uh, displayed there but hopefully this video is at least a good stepping stone for you to understand you know my thought process into getting the maestro my maestro to where it is today and it gets you more or less on the right you know path to getting your maestro where you would like it to be but that's going to wrap it up for me today guys um, the next video probably will not come out until tuesday just because I am taking this extended weekend to go handle some uh, some family stuff. So I will be out till Tuesday, but I do need a new video idea. So after this video, if you guys want to drop down in the comments a suggestion on the video that you would like to see the most next, that would be, that would be great. But as always, if you did enjoy, please don't uh, hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.